Hi, my name is Ann Sermons Gillis, and I'm really happy to be here with a new friend of mine who goes to Unity. And this is a new program that we're having. It's called Diving Deeper, and today we're going to dive deep into the life of Frankie Smith. Now, what is unique about Frankie, I think, is that she is a painter, and she started um, painting. Well, I'm going to let her tell the story, but I want to welcome you today. Welcome, Frankie. Hi, Anne. Hello, Unity friends. Ah, thank you. Thank you. So, you, how old were you when you started painting? I was in my late 50s. In your late 50s, so this was a new thing. How, were you interested in art or before and just never got around to it, or was this totally different passion? I had just retired on disability from teaching math for many, many years and raising children and being a pastor's wife, so I didn't have a lot of time for anything outside of those activities. Yeah. So I had plenty of time on my hands, and I, I've always had a creative leaning. I was doing things like, well, quite frankly, I was going through a grieving stage because I found I had Parkinson's. And part of my grief therapy for myself was I'd go to junk shops and buy all kinds of broken on in pieces of china and crystal, and I would turn them upside down and sideways, inside out, and glue them in all these beautiful glass art things, but they were, there was always something broken about them. And I wanted to take broken things and make something beautiful because I felt broken. Oh, um, that's beautiful. Well, wow. when you get diagnosed with a, an illness that's not going to get well, but going to progress, you go through a grief process. And I had to work through all the stages of grief. And that gave me something to focus on. Um, and I found joy. And I always decided in life that you choose your joy and you choose your attitude about what life gives you. Because none of us are promised an easy life, we're promised the best life we can find for ourselves, and it's what we give to others. And my art is my way of giving back to what God has given me. Because I feel like I'm sharing in his creative, or her creative process. So. Well, I'm wondering if, if you had not gotten Parkinson's, do you think you would have started painting and you would have been so prolific because you are prolific? Parkinson's has a side effect which you have an incredible focus on things to the point that you have to rein yourself in. So I, I don't think I would have had the focus that I have now, but I have a tremendous amount of focus. Okay, and so just tell us a little bit about, will you just give us a little, just a little bit about where you live uh, so we, we can kind of factor that into your artwork. I want to mention your studio, too. I live in St. George, and I have my own little studio, and it's a little bit of heaven. This is a very small town. It's very much a family town. It's very quiet, and we have a little haven here where I have my chimes and my fountains and plenty of outdoor areas. I love to entertain. I love to cook, which is another form of art, in my opinion, and I love to show hospitality. And part of my hospitality is I enjoy showing off my art studio. Uh, that art studio is incredible, and hopefully you'll get me a picture of that or we'll go take a picture. Now, I, I ask you if you'd be willing to show um, some of your art. And so uh, just first, do you tell about the kind of mediums that you do? Because you, you're not just using one different thing. You've got different kinds of art. Mainly, I use acrylic in my paintings. I like, still like working with glass. I do some what's called poor man stained glass, where I take windows and frames and take broken glass and objects and resin them onto the glass and makes pretty sun catchers. But my main focus is my acrylic art and I'm, I do abstract expressionism. And when I do that, it's a very spiritual process for me. I always go into my studio and I pray to the divine creator to help me be part of the creative process with the divine. And I pray for my spirit guides to help me and I do a prayer protection, and I use my pendulum on my color wheel to pick out the colors I'm gonna paint with that day, and I get lost in time. Time literally stands still or does not exist when I'm in my studio. I'll put on music, and I'll just start painting. Right now I'm painting to Phantom of the Opera, which is my favorite oh. Andrew Lloyd Webber piece of musical. Yeah. And I've done To God's Spell, I've done Elton John's Yellow Brick Road, I've done ABBA, Lenny Kravitz, uh, I'm very eclectic. I, I've done some Etta James, so if you see a, a painting of mine, it's been done with some sort of wonderful music. But the interesting thing is about time. Time does not exist. I'll go in for 15 minutes and I'll walk out and it's been four hours. Oh. I go into a trance and think God just channels through me when I paint. Wow, that's amazing. Well, did you take any painting classes in order to be able to figure out how to mix paints or how did you get into it? 
Well, this is the story. We were on a vacation at Edisto Island, and if you've ever been to Edisto Beach, there's a little strip mall on Jungle Road, and there's a little there was a little art wine and sip art studio in that little strip mall by the pizza place. We were walking on the the boardwalk in front of it one day after we picked up a pizza, and there was this little shop there, and she did not have anybody in there. She's there by herself, and she has some pretty little things in the window. So I said, "Let's go and look at the art." We went in. And I said, "Oh, I wish I had time to do this. I'd love to learn." And she said, well, there's nobody here now. For $60, I'll give you a, a one-hour lesson. Well, wow. nobody came in. And that one-hour lesson was three hours. We sat and painted side by side. And we painted the same stock picture together. And it's the only time in my life I've ever painted people, first and last time. And my first painting hangs proudly in there. And I love it. It was um, a young mother puddle jumping with two little children. And that brought back precious memories for me. But I've not done anything like that since. But I've done. I've just moved to doing abstract because... Well, did she, let me ask you, did she teach you, I know you have to mix paints, you've got, well, look no, at some of the paints. she didn't teach me anything, she just encouraged me, and she told me I had natural talent. Ah. So, and I, I, I picked up that brush then, and I've just not put a brush down since. Oh. Um, well, show us, show us one of your pictures. This you, one right here is called, this is one Anne said she liked. Yeah, this is the one I really like. This liked. is called Dawn of Illumination. Hold it up a little bit taller. There you go. This is Dawn of Illumination. You, now you're going to take it down so we can right. hear you better. This is one of my later pieces. I want to show you a few of my earlier pieces. Now, because I never know from one day to the next what I can physically do, so this takes a little more hand dexterity, and so I can do this some days, and some days I can't. This one's called Sunflower in a Blue Bottle, which is a very original title. And make, and hold that up higher. Yeah, there we go. So that's a, use a palette knife for that? This is a brush on... Um, Blue tissue on a canvas. Oh, brush and tissue. And this is a this is a brush and tissue. This both of these are acrylic. This one's called Feeling Van Gogh. This Van Gogh is my favorite artist. Oh yeah, you can tell the Starry Night. Um, mm -hmm. And the sunflowers. Yeah, and sunflowers. But I try to paint every day. Something's painting or being worked on in my studio every day. You try to paint every day. Now you told me that just because you have Parkinson's that you have to take several naps a day. I do. I take three to four naps a day. I have to medicate every two to four hours. Um, sometimes I'll go into a mental stupor where I cannot get my words out. The day is an on day. I can talk a blue streak today. But sometimes <laughs> I literally cannot get a word out of my mouth straight. And people might think, what's wrong with that woman? But what's wrong with me is if there's a People don't realize they think of Parkinson's they think tremors or stiffness. There's a cognitive disability part of Parkinson's too. And you can't think clearly, and even if you can think clearly, you can't get your thoughts out coherently when you want to speak to other people. And also there's a thing called masking. What you see now is not the real me. There is a mask on my face because the muscles on my face are frozen. So I have what's called, if you can excuse my French, the resting bitch face that I can't help. It's, it's, my mama said, be careful your face will freeze like that. She wasn't lying, y'all. My face froze. Your face froze, and so you're saying that it's hard for you to have any kind of expressions on your face. Right. So on these days that you have, that you're in more of a stupor and you have a cognitive dissonance or it's hard for you to think, do you still paint on those days? I do. I do. I think those are the most important days to paint because it gets me out of my physical body and into my spiritual self. That is pretty amazing. Now, I saw a video that you did. It looked like it was kind of a professional video. And um, you were kind of defining yourself. Do you remember what you said? Do you remember what I was talking about? Yes. This was done by a, a man named uh, Fajan Uzma. And he's a Pakistanian. And he did My Angel, My Hero, which was a story about a young, young man who had Parkinson's. And he was a professional movie. And out of that movie, Face On started doing My Angel and My Hero series of actual patients with Parkinson's. And we got to tell our story. And he, I did the video that he professionally edited and put it, it can be seen on YouTube. It's fabulous. I've got it linked on, under the Unity channel, under, I think, Diving Deeper. But I was talking about in that video that Parkinson's is not going to just take away the real me. The real me is still who I am. And who I am is a very special, talented, spiritual person who is loved by her father. I, I call God Papa. And, and, I, and I acknowledge the feminine aspect of God and the feminine, as, the feminine aspect of God comes across in my art quite frequently. But 
Jesus called God Abba, and Abba is the Aramaic name for Papa. And that just paints a beautiful picture because my daddy is the man that loves me the most in the entire world. Nobody loves me like my daddy next to my husband. And that love, I know that not a lot of people feel the same love toward their fathers or get the same love back from their fathers that I do. And I can sympathize with that. But daddy is the most precious word in the world to me. So when I call God Papa, I am claiming a oneness with God. God lives in me, God is part of me, and I am part of God, and that is the way I acknowledge it. So that comes across in my art, because I want God and I to work together to create beautiful things to share with other people. That's wonderful. Like you said, you are part of God, so it is God painting. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Well, I want to thank you so much. Is there anything else that you think you might like to add about your process or something that I didn't ask you about? Well, the process is very, very special to me. And like I said, it's done with prayer. It's done, and I always say thank you when I'm done. That's very important to, be, to have gratitude. gratitude. Gratitude is what I live by. And in the video that Ann mentioned, I talked about gratitude being an important part of who I am. So I am thankful, I am joyful, and I am thankful. Now my face may say I'm mad, but inside I'm very thankful and I'm the happiest person you know if you get to know me. All right, so we're going to give you the title today, The Happiest Person in the World, The <laughs> Happiest Person I Know. So great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frankie. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you.